Good evening and welcome to tonight's Hearthstone Half Hour. I'm, I'm Hammy from Furcraft.org. As always, I hope you're well, you've had a splendid day. Whatever time you're picking this up, you may actually catch this on Wednesday. We're actually catching up with a few posts. So we've recently got out a Druid post that we did not get out for a while. And now we are going to be getting out the Paladin from yesterday's episode, probably this evening. Um, I'll probably publish this tonight and get the other one out tomorrow. So we're just getting back into that three, four nights, hopefully five nights a week during the weekdays posting patterns so thank you for bearing with us um, like I've said in yesterday's episode it's been a really really busy busy couple of weeks I know you're hearing that a lot um, but thank you for tuning in so without further ado Tuesday is Arena Tuesday we are going to be getting straight on into some Tuesday Arena and today we're going to be finishing off this Hunter run I'll quickly run through what the deck looks like and how we were trying to play it as you can see it's not been going too well um, Partially uh, a couple of mystic picks, partially uh, a very, very, as you can see by that, two and three mana curve focus in the middle of the screen here. Incredibly early focused and weighted deck. So if it doesn't go off in the first um, few turns, then immediately this deck starts to struggle. So what was the purpose of this deck? Uh, we've showed you a Hunter Rush deck in one of our new player Mondays and newbie Mondays in terms of playing that and how it works in ranked and competitive. Um, this deck was really designed to be somewhat similar but in the wonderful world of Arena and Draft. So you can see we have way 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 and if there's a weakness of this deck that's what it is, way too many or a huge amount of two and three mana minions. You can see the Pyromancer so was meant to be anti-swarm, we had Starving Buzzard, lots of couple of scavenging hyenas, two unleash the hounds for the charge early ability, loot hoarder for card draw, and then getting summoned to that later game we randomly um, have the Savannah High Main and Sunwalker as finishing cards and the Night Blade so pretty thin when it comes to those higher end cards in the game. Um, it was meant to charge early and charge hard and fast and then when it charged hard and fast in the early game it was meant to really finish it then and there. Um, seeing a few viewers trickling live on Twitch Welcome to you. It's a really huge day. We're finishing off a hunter run and then possibly, depending on if we lose, getting right on in to a brand new arena. Rexa so, what we'll do as we play through, um, assuming. I will fight with honor. Let the hunt uh, be begin. Or otherwise, uh, we won't get through all of the basics of the arena. We'll assume that you know some of them. But in other cases, we will just go through a bit of how we're trying to play the deck that we drafted. So, this was meant to be a rush deck, as we just gone for. Um, I've traded in my Alex Straza um, and some of the cards I want in this deck to have some early minions that I can get out and start putting damage on win. Not happened here, but first turn, nothing with a one mana. Oh, I play. smell Paladin, um, it'll be interesting to see what he comes out with. Paladin's pretty strong in arena, but um, you can generally mix up nicely with neutral minions to put some pressure on. Um, whenever I summon a beast draw a card, I could drop my Starving Buzzard. Uh, the hero attacking two damage to all enemies is useful to combat the swarm. Uh, putting out the Starving Buzzard will probably just make me um, realistically fodder for that Wargan. He'll probably kill the Buzzard off to prevent me from having that card drawing ability. So I would probably like to be able to play some more beasts than I play that Starving Buzzard. Broken the Reporting for two damage on the board. Well, I've still got some options here. Now, if I want to keep my board clear, I can drop that explosive trap. Um, he may not attack my hero directly. It buys me another turn. Um, I would very much like to be in a position where I can play a surviving buzzard. Job done. So a surviving buzzard. A surviving buzzard would be good. Um, a starving buzzard into another beast card. Additional card draw. He has triggered my explosive trap. See that two damage to all enemies. Oh. Is to do for him. Um, we still haven't done an episode on reading of secrets. Um, we'll take a look at that. A strong play. Um, only too helpful that jungle panther. Three mana. That four attack is pretty painful. You know, pretty painful. Coming into turn four. Now we still cannot draw. Uh, cannot play our lovely starving buzzard into another card to draw. Um, we can drop in a silence and stealth the panther. He'd probably go for a trade there, so that might be an option. Your magic shall not see. Oh, I'm gonna stick that up there with some bait. Notice that I'm not actually gonna be able to silence silence it, so it's kind of throwing it out there as a bit of a bait. Um, one could have argued that we should have dropped this stuff and buzzed earlier. Um that true silver champion means we will swing free into my spellbreaker. Down. 
this turn. Um, I've not rushed as hard and as fast as I would early uh, in the game, so I may suffer to do with that if he starts pulling out big painful minions, but as long as I'm even with him, I've still got some capacity to do some pain. So I'm going to draw off an explosive trap, knowing that if he attacks his minions will be taken out. Um, the raid leader. Um, I'm not going to drop another minion. Job done. If I dropped another minion, he probably would swing his true silver champion, and he will do that and do some damage to me. But I should be able to take out this panther if he attacks my hero. Reporting for duty. And he should know that this is coming. I prevent that for damage. He Last eat tree silver champion. Instead, he has tapped on the table and that's um, So coming into turn six now, I really need to start Scarlet Crusader. Bit of a nasty card. Um, I need to start getting some pressure down on the deck. So I'm going to go. Starting with it. I'm finally going to go into my Job done. So let's me draw a card, and that gives me to think about. He will probably go for my Starving Buzzard. Um, there's no real health difference. In fact, I'm actually slightly ahead, although he can recover some of that health difference. Uh, and sensibly, he has got a And the charging Murlocs, that will allow him to take up the Scarlet Crusader with the three attack on one health and that Divine Shield still intact to put some pressure on me. He's also got four out of six mana. So this is the stage where really I need to be dropping a bunch of my low two and three mana cards and charging on into the enemy hero. Otherwise, I'm not going to get him low enough <laughs> to finally get a steady blood. shot. Um, this is a little bit dangerous for him used to him, but of course two explosive traps. There's no massive risk I'm going to be getting there. Gladiator's longbow will be my nice finishing card, or it will let me pick off minions without taking damage. Um, I'm going to mix it up here. So <laughs> Expensive on the mana front for me. <laughs> now, next turn, I do have the capacity to drop a couple of cards. <laughs> my it's leader, time for a little my blood. Gladiator's <gasps> armor. Murder! Kill command will let me pick off a minion and let me just see if I can do it. I can't. Do it. In terms of the more dangerous minion, I think the Injured Blade Master is a good uh, a good one to pick off. Um, there will then not be a five to drop off, so I'm gonna. No, do I have a beast? I do not have a beast to do five, so I'm gonna kill command away. They'll never know what hero and offer him a potential trade. So I've not really swarmed as early in this deck as I would have liked to have done, but at the moment, not going too badly. We're pretty even on minions, and I have that health advantage. Now, although this deck was not designed really to be uh, waiting around this lady, freeze from the and of course the neutral minion can be dropped into anything. To unleash the hounds, the more enemy minions he gets on the deck, the more those will come into play. Now, I've got a couple of options here. I think what I'm actually going to go for is my Gladiator combo. I'm going to use that to just get really I hunt and know that I'm immune when I am taking the damage. Unleash the hounds, I'm not going to use them right now. Job done! Um, using the immunity of the longbow, picking off the dangerous minion, I can still have a trade with this nightblade in my favour. Oh, and a destructive weapon. Um, Acidic Swamp Ooze, a fantastic neutral, you know, core card, a solid spine of any deck. Um, you call that a weapon? He's himself out, so he's picked himself up, and he's managed to put the table. I have some options here. Now, uh, in a good way, I can unleash the hounds a couple of times, and here is Quare. <laughs> unleash the hounds. Into an unleash the hounds. <laughs> Get Raid Leader to get one on attack. And last but not least, in a very mean move, we can hunt his mark and down to one. <laughs> That is a kind of rush I would have liked to have seen a little bit earlier in the game. Um, this deck is really 
as a, an arena draw deck it is very heavily weighted towards two and three mana cards however in this situation actually coming off for me ah uh, get so behind me until the heavy minions come in we're Not at ten mana right bunch. at the end of the game <laughs> Reporting for duty. Coming up, it's going to be hard for me to win the round. Well, there's nothing to do but being a pain to play Um I then can work out, can I in fact pick this minion off? I can, and I should. Um, it will be a little tough. I'm going to have to break his bubble and then do the extra damage. It will then let me swing away with the bow. Unless he pulls a tanking card next go, I've taken this victory just because, fortunately, with that double unleash the hounds and the raid leader at the right time, I was able to pick off a tank. So yeah, yeah, you he's gotta be kidding me! He's got a chunky minion. He needs to be able to protect against that damage. He can do a lot of damage to me, but I don't think he's going to this turn, and that gives me the victory. Unless we know he's played the coin, he's got a minion as well, but he's Reporting still going to be able against the damage. I hunt alone. Victory. Justice demands retribution. Lovely job, Link. As Del Boy would say, for any of you Brits or UK people familiar with only fortune, there is a specific reason for you. So, no early defeat as previously anticipated. Uh, we're two wins, two losses. Let's keep this hunter run going. So, exploring a little bit more hunter there. If you've not played hunter, we've, we've done videos talking about the various different kinds of rush and how you can rush in, how you can put pressure on. The good thing Rexa about arena is that it does force you to Gina. play a few more of the cards than you normally do. You ask for it. Let's the hunt begin. Constructed core deck gives you a bit more flexibility in your thinking and helps you try and work out. What, what different options you've got within your deck. It really helps you learn in a bit of a deeper way, but to really enjoy Arena the most and get stuck into it, get those longer runs together, you need to have got a really decent familiarity with a few different heroes first, just in case you draw a hero you're not too familiar with. In previous episodes, we've covered how you can deal with that as well. Um, in terms of this starting hand, I'm going to keep my Raid Leader. Um, the Imp Master is an option. I'm just trading away those higher mana cards because I want lots of early options here. Not too bad. Remember that I'm going seconds, so therefore I have my coin there for an extra mana crystal this turn only. Now, all I can get out here, I want to hold that Sun Fury Protector to give my minions taunt. Um, I'm not going to be rushing into anything with my coin. I'm just going to from the deck. Uh, playing a mage, a mage is a threat to me. We know that they've got a lot of freezes. We know that they've got a lot of area of effect. And above all, they've got lots of things that, in terms of area of effect, put pressure on what do I have, bar that random syndrome shield master? Quite a few of minions. Quite a few. Um, I'm not going to put a minion down right now. Um, I could rush into him. It's an option. In fact, what I'm going to do is just... I'm going to do to the hero as well. Have some of that. See, just a cheeky drop of the demolisher there. Um, often comes up in drafts. Uh, two damage to a random enemy. Nothing to be sneezed at. Reasonable health does need to be dealt with. So I need to make sure that I can get rid of that. Um, I'm not going to get rid of it in one go. Quite clearly, I do not have a beast down. I can't be kill commanding or anything too fancy just yet. What I can do, however, is win either a couple of smaller minions, um, which could be a good option or then just charge straight into a Sinjin Shield Master. However, that taunt, random two damage, you could just pick off my scavenging hyena. I'm actually just going to try to He does take the two damage, but he is alive and kicking, which is pretty good. It means that next go, at least I can get the attack away from him, rather than just perish. So, with something doing a random two damage at the end of your, at the beginning of every opponent turn, you do not want to be for the king! nearly, unless you can do it. Dropping anything that's going to be help. Now we can have a. Yep, and there we go. The charging storm of the night. Um, charge. 
hit, however, not very big attack. So I've got some good options here now. I can drop my explosive trap. Drop that down, I can either do more damage. Both of his minions will die very painfully. Um, Job's done! Of course he's going to do some damage with that demolisher. However, with that explosive trap, it is going to give me clearance of his small minions because he's on two and one. Majors, of course, not having healing options as well, so he, if he's a smart player, if he's uh, used to playing around secrets, he'll know Squire, that that's probably to cause some pain. Ready, he sir. Silverhand Knight. However, at least I'm also going to take out the as well. So, managed to put down Silverhand uh, Knight there, also down to two health, meaning that I can probably, probably pick it off next go with something. Am I so to say? Right, five five. I again, do have some more options. I can scavenging hyena into raid leader. He can pick either of those off at his will. I can't kill command um, anything. I could kill command into a five because, of course, a hyena is a beast, and that would pick him off. It does feel like a little I bit of a wonder. waste of damage, but at least it gets me something on the table. Do you know what? On balance, probably considering, I'm just going to scavenging hyena. Uh, the hyena, of course, a nice draft card for a hunter, but generally you want to be using a lot of beasts because of its ability. Um, if a lot of my beasts are dying, like those 1 1 Unleash the Hound Hounds, for example, it's a freeze. Any character, if I damage that minion, achieve one damage to the fire blast, that's going to be the end of our opponent's go. What kind of options do we have here? Well, we can double raid leader for what should be some very interesting pain. I can give adjacent minions taunt. I think what I'm going to go for actually, I cannot um, do five. Um, a kill command would put this chap on the verge of death. Um, mm -hmm. and misdirect. misdirect, of course, means uh, he can attack another random character instead of attacking me. Now, that could be one of my minions, that could be my hero. Who knows? However, for the time being, I'm going to keep hero. He might have ice blocks and similar later in the game, but. Purpose of this deck, of course, is to put lots of pressure on as early as possible so that by the end of the game you can be steady shutting every turn and hopefully with it, whittling your opponent down just before hopefully you duck yourself. <laughs> my core hound, a big, chunky, chunky piece of pain. I do have a beast. I hope he does not kill my beast because I can actually pick off that core hound with my kill command. Um, you'd have seen that I've got one. If he removes my beast, my kill command only does three. However, <laughs> was actually, although he wouldn't know it, a slightly incorrect decision. He doesn't know I've got another kill command in hand, of course, but that is absolutely what I'm going to play right now. Let's kill it away for five damage. Yum. Forehand is by my marauding bird and kill command. Lovely jubbly. So, what is our option now? Well, we can drop a silence. We can get rid of that freeze, which might be quite useful. Um, any other things I could drop will be quite handy. Minions would taunt. Not Your sure magic right shall not see. <laughs> Job done. Me. At least if he attacks me, uh, my minion is not going to be frozen. However, if he attacks either of my minions due to the health and his attack, they would of course perish. So we've managed to, at the moment, keep this mage relatively well locked down. Although maybe he's not had a run of the draw in his cards. Um, we've managed to keep the pressure on. Although we haven't rushed again quite as early as we would have liked to. And what to do? So we do have reasonable to do? control. He hasn't overwhelmed us with minions. He hasn't massively nuked us. We are still in a reasonable position with our longbow in hand, a couple more minions to keep the pressure on. And cheeky little uh, ping with the water elemental have really just picked everything up. But there goes the misdirect. Three damage to himself. He wasted one of his attacking turns. And you can see I'm just highlighting my hero in bewilderment and confusion. I do apologise, my armage friend. So you can see, particularly with the secrets here, I feel that's worth pointing out while we're waiting for our, our esteemed friend here to finish his turn. You can see how misdirected and explosive trap, they're very common in the Hunter Rush deck in Constructed. Uh, see how secrets can be used, but it's very often about playing them at the right time. I mean, it's less important to a degree in Thank you. Arena. Thanks. And thank you to you too. Um, Alex Straza, uh, setting a hero's health to 15. I'm only going to play that if I really want to heal myself. Um, 
what I'm probably going to do here is drop my longbow. Time to load. Job's done. And really just keeping the deck clear because I know that obviously because this is a mage, he could have loads of pyro blasts, horrible nuking spells. Um, Alex Straza was my uh, very, very random legendary. When I don't, you will find this when you play Arena if you haven't already. Do you ever find it a bit strange when you just get the really random Dundia legendaries turning up? And there's no real reason. They, they've not because it's random. There's no real reason that they should be with the particular hero that you've decided to go with. They're just there. It would be a shame not to take one of them. So Alex Straza, <laughs> although as uh, admittedly. Yeah, sure. If I was very behind, it would even the tables. But I've used this in one game actually to heal my hero up to 15 health. <laughs> Mango's a secret. So let's have a quick chat because a secret has been dropped about playing around mage secrets or playing around secrets in general. Now, all mage secrets are, I believe, unless my memory says me wrongly, I think they all cost three mana. No, that's quite correct. They all cost three mana, and there's about what, how many is it? Five, six, possibly. I think it's possibly even seven. Yeah, there are seven secrets. So how do I know what this guy's played? How do I know? Should I attack? Should I not? Well, um, some of them involve... No so casting a spell on a minion is one effect. Um, that triggers one. Um, attacking the hero is a, another one. Sort of another two triggers. Uh, hero taking feral damage is another trigger. And then you've also got spell casting and the minions being played as other triggers so I how you play around it is to a degree you've got to work out what has been done by doing different things so handle it so i've played a minion and it hasn't triggered it i immediately know that's not mirror entity the mirror entity mage secret summons a copy of the minion so i could cast a spell and see if it was counter spell but i want to keep that deadly shot um, I now know that I can safely play my quickly. Play. There's no real huge reason to mm. destroy that haunting board and I can destroy that might have already been I'm gonna drop my sun. Shield up! And then the last one is I find that Remember I'm still holding this gladiator's longbow in hand for five. There's no problem with me whittling away a bit when I see what this mage is going to be up to. And of course, he would could have a blizzard or a fire strike or something that would freeze me or take out all my minions. So I'm a little bit playing in the dark here, but it is good to see what he's going to come up with next. So while he takes his turn, we've already ruled out what one of the do? seven, uh, sorry, six do? different secrets the mage could have had by playing. <laughs> know that because there's nothing happened it is not mirror entity which is summoning a copy of any oh and there's the buff that's going to make that a little bit annoying what else is there well there's counter spell so if i cast a spell he could just counter it immediately make it not work vaporize if a minion attacks the hero then it would be immediately destroyed ice block if he takes fatal damage he becomes immune for a turn uh, Spellbinder, when an enemy casts a spell on a minion, summon a 1-3 minion as the new target. Priest Barrier, so time to get eight armor. We've now got two secrets down. <laughs> They're going to be keeping him in the game for quite a bit of time. So I'm going to cast a spell next turn. Three secrets! Time runs out on me! This is crazy. I have no idea what's going on there. There's dangers all over the shop. Right. Firstly, let's see if, it is a, if he has a counter spell. I'm going to... Right, there we go, he does a counter spell. So, that's one so it's not worked. Okay, that's no problem. Um, I'm going to see if he has a mirror entity. <laughs> does have a mirror entity. <laughs> it's a copy of mine. And this is where it gets painful. So he does have one more secret left. Now, did I have huge amounts of options there? Not huge. Um, so what I'm now. I hunt alone. And then I'm actually. Going I got to this. Do an even trade. Job done. Savannah High Main is not going to be. We've now got an even field and one of those secrets done. So, as you can appreciate, that was frustrating. Um, there was no real way of playing around those secrets, but at least by choosing to unveil the secrets on my terms, I could decide what I wanted to do about them and counter accordingly, rather than at a time in the game when maybe it's a bit more crucial. So, I've got a good health lead. I had a reasonable position in terms mm. of millions. Um, I knew that he. I knew the six different secrets he could have. I think they might have two. He's down to four health. He's gonna three. He's one of my sure. or die. I believe. Or both. Sensible thing to get some pressure on my hero. And there it is. Freeze for one turn. Adds additional damage. 
He, of course, does not know that I've got Alex Straza, so I can use Alex Straza. I could play Alex Straza now um, and use that as an attacking card, or I could use it as a heal. Um, playing that means he's immediately going to have to deal with it with one card in hand, unless he has a polymorph. Um, but really, if I was going to attack his hero, mm. I wouldn't want to trigger a Vaporize secret. He could still have a Vaporize there. So what I'm actually going to do, I think for the time being, is just drop him on a hyena and just keep this control. Now the reasons for that, okay, I now have less of a health lead. I only have 8 health um, on him compared to his 12. I have 20. But there's still a secret we need to play around that. And he could have played 2 of the same secret by playing a minion. I will very soon know if he summoned a copy of Alex Straza, we could be really in trouble. Um, and quite simply put, we don't know what he has there. So I wonder. Because last turn, we didn't really do anything that would trigger a secret. We're not attacked. Because My shield on for Argus! Oh, the Defender of Argus comes in. Fantastic card. And that is really going to give him a lot of options. As well as the 1-1 one, one buff. Um, it means that he can now basically pick out my high main. However, if he does, he knows that my scavenging hyena is going to get buffed up quick. So the sensible thing to do would probably be to take out this hyena. He's going to go straight for the attack. He may go straight for the pressure on the hero again. And this is where Alex Straza is going to come into play in spades. It gives me a nice chunky heal. This game is now very close. It may be that I actually end up... Time runs out on me. But he's a great example. There he is, he's really piling the pressure on. Little does he know uh, what I have this for. Oh, and there's another option in the Sunwalker I could drop as a tank. I'm just thinking which way this is going to play out. He could, if he really pressured hard, pick through and swarm me for the win if I drop the Sunwalker. So that's not the right play. But what I am going to do I bring is heal myself. <laughs> he was not expecting that. So a heal keeps me in the game for a bit longer. There, I really have no option at this point other than to um, <laughs> sacrifice the more dangerous of the two options. <laughs> with the 4-3, he will have two of those to attack with next go. However, with the Scavenging Hyena, he can then take out his other team. <laughs> he might have enough cards to nuke me for the win. I just don't know. He might have a pyro, but it could be game over. Um, but it's got to a nice exciting late game phase, so let's see what we've got. And we've still of course got that secret that he's got hanging around at the top of his board to play around to. Uh, so a nice example, Alex Straza does have some uses in the odd constructed deck or ranked deck or two, but the random legendary not being so awful there, buying me a bit of more time with a 7 health heal, and also I can attack with the max go, do. and there is no what tank, to do. so we just need to um, discover what the secret is and potentially we have a win next go so the ball is now in our mages court a very exciting finale to this match in this game of course um, a usual mage versus a uh, hunter in a laddered game would be a lot uh, get behind me another tank card uh, he's really pulling out one of these late game tanks and as you can see when we talked about this deck at the very beginning of this half stone half hour um, this hunter rush deck that I have really so so heavily weighted on the early game. Since we're playing here, I would probably trade for the two twos. A very good move. Um, he can attack my hero. Pretty sensible move, but I can keep chipping away with this as well. Time runs one. out on me. And I just don't know what he has here. Could be Bashy Berserker. That is gonna get very painful very quickly. Now doing two damage to the enemy when my hero is attacked could power up his berserker. However, I do is my shield. Dude. I will mourn thing. your death. I'm going to go ahead and attack with that. Very <laughs> uh, nicely pick me off next go. Uh, it's a risk. If I drop that explosive trap and do two damage, okay, that three attack could be used to swing into something. He can ping me for one. He can then pick off my tank. He can then pick off my tank or something else. It is all get some butts and maybe at this stage. Drop the secret and keep the pressure on with steady shot. So really it all depends now. If it didn't all depend last turn, it all depends this turn on what our mage friend has in his hand. Um, the ping, yep, absolutely. A very sensible move to remove that divine shield. We'll give him the potential to pick off that minion if he does some damage to himself. But he knows that he needs to try and find a way of getting through my Sunwalker. Unless he has a Vaporize, which would 
destroy his minion or give him 8 armor or he could have an ice block. Forward damage. Really painful for me, and that of course does give him the option then of picking off um, my Sunwalker with the Lizard oh! Berserker. So we're now in a very, very even position. Oh, there goes the damage, and this is where the explosion is bad because it gives him additional attack after he's completed the attack. So he could actually now win next go. So what am I going to draw? That is not going to give me the damage I need, I think, to prevent him from winning it next turn. He can damage his own minion, of course, remember, to do seven next go. Oh, three attack. He will do eight attack next go. If he's sensible, he can use that fire blast to damage his berserker further. He'll give him eight attack and let him win the game. So that is the final signal. That is well no done. Way. Let's see what his next go. that actually brings to an end our arena run that we had going. Um, not the finest hunter deck, um, but let's just do the little back of the bit. It's still lovely. And then... Almost half an hour as well. Fantastic. Pack of cards. And you know what? Let's open that pack as well. That Hearthstone shiny satisfaction of whooshing it around with the glitter. One rare, the Orkanai Soul Priest. I always love that in my priest decks. A light spawn also pretty handy too. And a few things to top up. So, thank you very much for tuning in this evening. Um, you viewer, it's, it's been really great to have you viewers live on Twitch. Um, that was our Arena Tuesday. We jump into continuing Arena runs uh, next Tuesday or maybe on Thursday we'll start a new one but we'll jump into Arena, play through Arena and talk through the decks that we draft and how you can play in Arena as you go very much from a, a new to intermediate player's perspective. Um, no Arena expert here. I've always played more constructed but very enjoyable likewise. Um, thank you very very much for tuning in. Um, as always, really, really want to ask if you've seen this on YouTube, if you've tuned in live on Twitch, please rate, comment, let us know what we did well, let us know what we could do better. We really appreciate all your feedback. Um, it helps us just make better content for you. So thank you very much for that. Um, where you can find us, uh, as always with our usual sign-off, um, we have many other episodes covering new player constructor decks, rank decks, basic card game and deck building concepts here's where you can find all those um, youtube.com forward slash fellcraft casts that's our archive it's got a whole bunch of stuff on there um, some other games as well we like casting other games so get in there check it out if you want to learn more about hearthstone or discover some new decks discover some new arena strategies constructed strategies we cover from both a new player's perspective and an intermediate to more advanced player's perspective so there's something for everyone there go and have a look much appreciated if you are live and want to catch us too twitch.tv um, forward slash fellcraft casts um, twitch accounts are free you should sign up you should subscribe if you like what we're doing you'll get an email when we're going live we tend to go live around about 7 7 30 to 8 p.m gmt uk time monday to friday that's where you can find us um, if you want a little bit of live chat, uh, twitter.com forward slash fellcraftcasts. We're on Twitter. You can catch us through the day, through the evening. Drop us a tweet there. Let us know how we're doing and let us know what we can do to make better content for you. Or just for a bit of a chat about games, games and more games as well. And last but not least, the website, fellcraft.org. On the website, you will find blogs, you will find text, articles and written stuff. If you can't watch videos, you can get a little bit more context and written stuff around the different videos that we're doing. And last but not least, we've got a good learning resource that we're building up there of deck lists, things that don't live quite so well in a video format, but it's always nice to have a little online home. You can go and find articles and lists and just lots of good resources and links that you can find to get into your favourite games or new games you picked up a bit more. Hearthstone, League of Legends, Starcraft and similar. Um, so, there's nothing more for me to say, but please, 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 if you're watching and you enjoy or you think we could improve, just do get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. So there's one thing I can ask for. Give me a shout and let us know what we can do better for you. Tomorrow night we will be back. It's going to be Wednesday. Wednesday is Ladder Attack Day, where we take constructed decks and keep throwing ourselves as a zero to hero run, getting up that ladder. Um, 
seeing what's in the metagame. We're talking a bit more about intermediate style constructed decks, seeing what people in competitive and rank modes are playing in Hearthstone, and also going into our own um, thoughts on what's going on as well. So thank you very, very much for tuning in. Um, it's really, really good to see you. And for some reason, now I'm just about to finish this stream. Loads of people are jumping in live on Twitch. Hello to you guys. It's really, really good to see you. Sadly, I'm just about to finish up, but this video will be live at youtube.com forward slash Falcroftcasts, and you can see our whole archive of videos there. Um, if you just tuned in, we're on tomorrow again at a similar time, so please, please, please drop us a subscribe on Twitch, drop us a subscribe on YouTube, or follow us at twitter.com forward slash failcraftcasts and you will be able to know when we're going live again and to pick up a bit more strategy and just a bit more Hearthstone goodness. So cheers for tuning in guys. Um, I've been Hammy from failcraft.org. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow night or again soon and take it easy. <laughs>